don't mind uh, recording the videos, by the way. I should have asked this question. What? To uh... publish it on our website. And maybe you are hoping for something. It's okay for you? It's fine, yeah? Okay. So we are getting content. Okay, that means that I will have to be proper with my language. <laughs> Okay, no. Good morning everybody again. I hope you will, you will have enjoyed the, the break. Now we will try to have a little bit of fun. Okay? Uh, thank you very much Mustafa and the people from the Sierra project to allow me to be here. I will do as, pa as uh, Paolo, I will try to, to share my experience, okay? But before I start, let's see, I'm going to tell a lot of things. Many of them has already been introduced by, by your national contact point. Most of them has already been said by, by Paolo. So I will try to, on the one hand, to repeat it just to make sure that we all get it. And the other thing is I will repeat it from a different perspective. Uh, and I will start by asking you, please, as uh, to give more dynamics to the thing, try to, if you were going to have questions, try to write that down in a piece of paper. So, one, we only have the question, not all the introduction, just the question. And when we go to it, we can order it and I can sort it out and, and answer it more or less in, a, in an ordinated way. Okay? So, let me start. Look at the, the title of, of what I want to talk. There are several keywords here. One is European Union. This is money from the, real, from the European Union by means of one of the most important tools that the European Union has to, to provide funding, which is the, the so-called uh, Research and Technological Development Framework Programs, or FP7 in jargon. This is a key word, jargon. The Commission and all the, 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 the papers of the EU got a lot of jargon, their own European Commission language that you will have to learn if you want to play this game. Paolo calls it a game, I also call it a game. It's a very serious game, but it's a game in itself. With its own rules, with winners and losers. Okay? It's like a football match that we are going to have between Italy and Spain tomorrow. That's the reason I'm leaving the, leaving the country very early tomorrow. Just to avoid, you know, making Paolo to be very sad. <laughs> no way! <laughs> no way! Okay, uh, another key word here, first of all, the long one, funding, the other one is co-funding, okay, somebody did this early this morning, I heard, hey, what about the support from my national government? Well, the support from my national government is not a nice little letter with a huge letterhead and great signatures of the his or her excellence, the vice super duper minister. No, no. Send, show that you have a check or you have a budget, and that will be more convincing that you are taking care of the co-funding. But in any case, I will talk about money and how to get money and to manage money. I'm not talking about science. Okay? It's not because I'm not a researcher. It's because we are talking about, I was being asked to talk about this, and this is about money. So, if somebody is not interested in money, probably he or she should spend the rest of the day doing something more interesting. Because this is about money. Getting money. Co-funding is a very educated way of how do I get money from the Commission to do things that I understand that are interesting, important, or whatsoever. Okay? My name is Ruben Riestra. I'm from a company in Mark, in Spain. I'm, I'm not a researcher. I'm an engineer and I have an MBA. 
and somebody was saying that, that I am a money, a money maker. Well, no, I'm a consultant. Consultants never get to be millionaires. <laughs> it's better, we are in a better position because we are friends of the millionaires. So the guys are the owners of the plane, and I fly in the plane. So just think about it. Okay? Having a lot of money is really, really a problem. It's really a problem. I remember one of these nice researchers saying to the commission, it was February of 19, no, of 2006, and he said, hey, Mr. Commission, you gave us so much money that we didn't know what to do with all that money. That's the reason our project was not successful. That's a very interesting excuse. Please never ever said that in public. The guys of the commission that are involved in this thing, they are willing to give money. The problem is that you have, as your national contact point show already, thousands of Europeans, much more in practice with this thing, trying to get that money. Okay? But they're willing, the commission is willing to provide the money provided that you have a good idea. And I will explain this along my conversation, okay? So, a little bit of what I want to do in the next uh, 70 minutes. First of all, try to set up. I already started with the setup. Then I want to explain to you about the competitive landscape, that you are not alone, that you are not going to be playing alone, but I already started to give some lines. Then. Despite Mustafa doesn't want me to create to, 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 to tell you how to create proposals, well, if we don't create competitive proposals, afterward we cannot manage the projects. Okay? And I will try to link both things and I will explain you how, how things are totally related. And of course, how we deliver. Again, if we don't submit a proposal, we will never win. So first of all, we have to create it but we have to make sure that we push the button, that we submit the proposal right in time and already being prepared for what happens afterwards, okay? I will mix, uh, you will hear and you will see things that you have uh, already been shown by your national contact program and also by Paolo, but try to get the trick how it is different. Unfortunately, I am being recorded so that will limit a little bit of what I'm going to say, but, you know, somehow accidents occur, the camera gets disconnected, <laughs> and, um, you know, and the eyes are there for something, okay? And if not, you will get my email, and I will be in contact, because, uh, as I am very close to, to Trento, uh, uh, so I will help in Sierra. I hope that this is the first time and not the unique time. We are talking about, oh, let's take advantage that Ruben's here. Ruben's here for the first time, I hope not for the last one. So, about settings. Um, this is who I am, or what I do. And when I say I, is me plus a, a team, a very small team of six people. We are seven, and we, what we do is we do, I'm a professional, research project coordinator. What Paolo said, he said uh, he was not, I, I am. I go project after project. As a matter of fact, several projects at the same time. It's a business, it's a profession. As good as others. Just by a series of accidents, I end up having more experience in research projects than most of researchers in, in, in Europe, because most of the pro they, Researchers are like uh, poor Paolo. He can only manage one project at a time. Yeah. We do something like today, something like eight, eight, eight projects, something 40 million, 80 partners from 20 countries. People, we are having partners from, from Argentina to Sweden, from India to Iceland, with the Americans inside, with the Germans, just name them. Hmm? Universities, big companies, small companies. This is what we do. And we have another 30 partners just in one project, which is a, a nightmare. But I'm not being the coordinator of this one, just in case you know. Okay, no. So that's what I am. I already I learned that we have a very heterogeneous group here. 
So I will repeat what Paul, uh, Paolo says about one, one size doesn't fit all, but, but my slides are going to be available, uh, Mustafa, so I will give it to you, you will have them. Um, what I will try to give is some hints that are independent of the kind of project you are looking for. Please don't tell me, oh no, that here in Palestine we are different. I've been working in Argentina, I've been working in Russia, Turkmenistan, uh, the States, many, and everything, everybody takes it, oh no, Ruben, you, you know what happened? Here we are different. Well, no, that's it. I go back to my first slide. It's about European Union and it's about getting funding. The rest, you will customize it, you will adapt it, but the principles are here. And there are the principles of 25 years working in this business, okay? This is what I can share with you today, and I will be more, more than happy to keep on sharing it. Just try to make a question. Don't tell me your opinion, just tell me the question, okay? So, first of all, the competitive landscape. The very most important thing here is that in the same moment that I'm giving this conversation, leading this conversation today here, there are many, many other places where there are other guys discussing how to get money out of the European Union. Your National Contact Point said earlier today, 5,000 proposals. Well, okay, there's a lot of money because we're talking about billions. But when you submit your proposal, your proposal does, does not go against 5,000 proposals. It goes against 20 in the big project, 20, 30, or it goes about 150 to 200 when it is small one. So you are competing for each of your proposals, you are competing with a, between 40 and 200 proposals. Okay? So please bear this in mind. And repeating what Paolo says, with a great idea, it's a must to have a great idea, but it is by definition not enough. Hmm? And what, hmm? Having a good, uh, the, the good basis for a mousse is great, but it's not all. It takes a lot of even how you put it into the dish. Okay? So, so far, your national contact point was saying that in FP1, you were talking 1984. Look, 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 look how this thing has come through the, the successive FP. Right now, we're talking about 50 billion. A lot of money. But the good news, the good news is that we are heading to something big, even bigger. Why? Because Europe thinks that investing money in research for a purpose is a good uh, solution for the challenges that at least Europe has. Well, Europe and the rest of the world, but it has been proved that innovation right now is the biggest driver for economic growth. So that's the reason we are heading into this. Today, look at the black line, we are at the end of FP7. As a matter of fact, there's only two chances made basically to submit proposals before FP7 finishes. But for those of you, and I see a lot of young faces here that are heading into the next eight years, there are things that I'm going to be telling today that will apply, and there are other things that will change, but the basics are there. So right now, FP7 basic components, from the point of view of Ruben, from the non-official, Although, so the FP7 has a specific programs. Some of you already got this, this, this jargon, cooperation ideas, capacities, people. Your SP has done very, very good over this. There are themes and there are work programs. There are topics. In the topics, there are desired outputs and expected impacts. All words that you have already heard this morning. And there are funding schemes. Paolo was talking about the huge integrated project. These are projects with 8 to 10 to 12 partners, 10 to 12 million euros of European money, 
The strips are the small research projects of up to 2 million euro from European money, four or five partners. So there are different things, but the most important thing here, and first lesson, all what deals with FP7 is written and it is accessible through websites. Okay? It's just keep this to take home. Remember the slide, you will have the slide, so uh, try to find out in the documents you're writing, uh, you're reading, these kind of things, because these are the right things to be, to be read for preparing your proposal and for managing your projects. Everything that I say for the proposal is related to the management of the project. And I hope that when I wrap up, you will have, you will have a, a clear picture. I will go, I will go in, in a mixture from top down to bottom up, but let's see if I can get in the middle something dense enough that you can take back home. And the last thing is the call for proposals. What I was saying two minutes ago is that there are only two basic call for proposals for the rest of the, of the year, well, the rest of the year. One is called 10 that, um, that it finishes uh, January 13 next year and the other would be in April. So there's not that much time, but there's still a window of opportunity. But these are the elements of the mechanic of the puzzle. Try to link all these words and you will have 80% of the, of the basic knowledge that you have to have in order to compete for the European funding. But as, as I was saying, we are traveling from FP7 to FP8 FP8, as they wanted to change things, European Commission from time to time they like to change names and things or, or to order the, how they are structured, things that are in column they, they put it in rows, uh, things that they're calling um, FP7, now they don't want to call it FP7, they want to call it Horizon 2020. Uh, well, you have to be patient. <laughs> they're politicians, they're civil servants, they need to to do things. They have to justify their existence sometimes. So, the FP7 was guided, was the main, the biggest tool that the Commission was using to get to something called the Lisbon Strategic Vision that said something like, by 2010, by 2010, Europe is going to be the leading economy of the world based on knowledge. You know that this didn't happen. <laughs> so when you do, when you, when you don't fulfill a great vision like this, what do you do? Either you commit suicide, or you resign, and you go home, or you reinvent another vision for 2020. Okay, so let's go to 2010. As we fail in, as we fail in 2010, let's go for 2020. C'est la vie, you know. Uh, this is part of the game. You need to understand because they are very serious. They talk blah 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 blah. But, but so working as they work in the last year, it was not. We didn't make it. So let's try to find out a better way. Because not only the bad news is that we didn't get it when we wanted to get it by 2010, but by 2012 we are miserable. Because we don't have growth, we were used, you have to think in terms of, of Brussels, or Frankfurt, or uh, the big European cities, growing bigger, modern, da 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 da, and now, we are not growing, we have unemployment, forget about Europe, uh, Spain that has 50% of the university graduates are unemployed in Spain right now, which means going back to 1986. In 1986, we used to have more or less the same problem that people forgot about what happened in 1986. Because in the last 20 years, we have become richer and nicer and more handsome and bigger cars and bigger roads, da 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 And now we're stuck again. We don't know what to do. So they changed the thing. And we also have this something called, and this is jargon again, innovation emergency. Which is the problem with the innovation emergency? that in the last 20, 30 years, Europe was fighting all the time not to fall behind 
the United States and Japan. Well, Japan, I don't know what is it right now, trying to solve their own problems. The American has sold them their, their own country to, to China. Huh? But now we've got Japan is still there. The Americans are still there. But then we have the Chinese, the Russians, the Indians, and Brazil for having fun. Yeah. But Brazil is the third, number three in the world in selling commercial jet planes, coming directly from the underdeveloped world. It's not anymore Kofi or Ronaldo, or, or, well, the, the, or the original Ronaldo, or Pelé. No, no, they sell planes. They have nuclear energy. They, the, Brazil is, so it's not that we are falling third. We are more falling up, ah, sorry. And South Korea, there is somewhere there that nobody talk about them. But we are in the risk of being sixth or seventh. That's innovation emergency. Okay? So for that, they create a lot of new buzzwords like the Innovation Union, the Horizon 2020, because we need to create jobs. This is what I'm trying to elaborate on Paolo was saying about return on investment. He should have let me to talk about return on investment. Professor talking about return on investment, but thank you very much, Paolo. Return on investment is the political return on investment. Politicians are blaming researchers that after pouring a lot of millions of euros, the only thing they get they got was something like, well, thousands of scientific papers, thousands of conferences, thousands of proofs of concept, or PowerPoint prototypes. Name them. Huh? Some professors got a really nice house, or well, looking at the passport of a professor is an, a show in, its, in themselves. They have more seals in their passport than consultants, which is not acceptable. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. I'm, I, of no, course I'm, I'm not insulting because I'm, I'm not telling not them, the I'm truth. Hmm? Because I fly with them. <laughs> uh, the problem is how many jobs Europe has created a lot, a lot of knowledge in the discipline, whatever you want. But we have failed in transform that knowledge into new products, new services, new solutions, uh, solve problems, create wealth, create jobs, da 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 da, -da. or even create the conditions for this growth to continue. So that's not acceptable because everybody, I don't know why, blames, don't they, the, the, the politicians have found out that the society don't blame researchers. They blame politicians, I don't know why. And the politician says, wait a minute, we will give you money for your new dreams, but give us something back, which is not that bad. The good news is that if we have the proper ideas or we know how to put them in a nice parcel with a nice ribbon, we still have a problem and we still have the opportunity. Okay? And that means coupling research to innovation, going from the lab to the shop. That in some time, the, and when I say the shop, I'm sorry, you know, I'm biased because I'm working for ICT. Uh, if there is education put here, school, or if it is a, a, a hospital, help put here a hospital. But it's a, if we don't find the nurse of the hospital using the, big, the, the most advanced technology, we are not doing a proper job. That's the, what's going to happen uh, in the future. As far as they say that it's going to happen. The problem is that these things are said by the politicians, but then all the paperwork has to go down, and somebody in an office say, well, forget about the politician, let's keep on doing business as usual. You just send me the, pa the papers with all the stamps and all the copies, and everything will keep on working like that. That's the risk. I hope it doesn't work. This is good for, for, mobilizing, for mobilizing science. So this is not theory. What I'm giving you is hints on how to prepare proposals and, uh, and how to manage 
projects right now. If you learn, if you read between lines, I'm already telling you which kind of proposal you have to write. Okay? It's not just, I'm not a politician, I'm a consultant. Coupling research to innovation, industrial leadership. We need to have business. Business is basically companies, but if it is a hospital that knows very well, hey, my hospital needs a new way of managing my entire cycle of purchasing, stocking, and delivering uh, medicines to our 2,000 or 5,000 of our 100,000 patients, that's a business. That's a business in this term. It is what Paolo was saying, whose problem are you solving? If I am solving the problem of the national health system, say it. Say it. Please don't say, oh, I'm solving the problems of humanity, or I'm, everybody will use the results of my project. When you say everybody, it means nobody. It's because you have not studied. You think, you believe, you have trust, whatever. You have to demonstrate. Remember, we are talking about money. You don't go to the, to the bank, oh, I have the vision that my house is going to be very nice. Lovely. But which where are the warranties for my loan? This is more or less the same. You have to do your homework. You have to, as a matter of fact, and this is, take it from an expert. When you start to write your proposal, one of the first things you have to write is what somebody, your national contact point comes here in five years' time and asks you, can you show me how people are taking advantage of the result of your project? And then start writing backwards. If you cannot have a good picture or the best picture with figures, with good, clear, and short ideas about what's going to happen two years after the project is finished, well, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. Or don't go to this. Or don't go to this, OK? That was the business. And this is another thing I was hearing this morning. What about the small little? Well, in Europe, 99% of employments are created by small companies. Although, of course, small companies don't have the SAP big number, big name, or the big names in European, not, not all the, the big companies are 52, 100, 2,000. SMEs are counted by, the, by millions. Well, the commission never liked it to work with SMEs because they are civil servants. They don't feel respected by the SMEs, by the small company. Because it's, you know, SMEs are those people that they only want to make money out of working. And I am a civil servant. But no, they found out because the, 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 these guys, as they have, are millions of companies with ten, tens or hundreds of employments each, these guys are votes. That's the reason why. They are, they are not looking for the SMEs because, ah, I found out, oh, I see the light. No, it's not that they saw the light. These guys are votes. The guys of the multinational that got a lot of money from the European Commission in the last 20, 30 years, now they say, oh, sorry, Europe, we are going to produce in China. They close the factories in Europe and they go to China whatsoever. What they, you know what they left behind? Thousands and thousands and thousands of people very unhappy that immediately changed the governments of all the European countries in the last two years. And that should never occur again, according to the politicians. That's the rational though of these things. Please understand it because of course, I hope the, the video is not going to be <laughs> but this is what happens. And this is what Paolo was trying to say in his very polite uh, way. And you were doing in your very polite way. Oh, you need to understand the conditions. This is understanding the conditions. Please don't be naive. Don't be naive. Because there are the other researchers like you, they have already suffered this. And they are really, really mean. They, are really, they, they understand the name of the game. 
They keep on talking in a very polite way because they, they have to find, they meet their colleagues in the conferences. But there, sometimes, I, you know, I feel my pockets, you know, I, I, I feel hands in my pocket, you know. They're, they're these guys that they are trying to get money for their research. Okay? So, it's not easy, but it's champion leagues, and it's a lot of fun to play champions leagues. And it's professional fun. Paolo has serious problems to get through the doors after he finished Oka. He's so proud that he, you know, he had to go sideways. No, I just go fast. <laughs> uh, let's see, it's difficult, but if you succeed, it's just imagine you get to the quarterfinals of, uh, of the Champion League. Well, perhaps you don't beat, you don't, you're not Real Madrid. But there's only one Real Madrid. Thanks God. <laughs> well, these are figures. It's not the figures that your SCP put all together, but it's the guys against you compete. When you compete, you compete to a few hundreds. And as a matter of fact, when you go into your narrow scope of your proposal, you're competing to mainly, mostly 150 in a small, 20 in a big one, unless you are in the last part of a framework program, like we are right now. Right now, for a very seasoned submitter of proposals, my usual success rate is double this thing, double this figure. I'm usually working with between 33 and 40 percent. The last, out of the last four proposals, I only got one. Because everybody is so desperate to get proposals that instead of having 20, where we are usually having 20, now there were 45 to 50. And where there were 100, now we have 180. So it's tough. The bad news is it's really, really tough. Uh, this is, well, this is a problem. No, no, so, can you please just say something about the last one? I will come back to this later when I close, but this is what happened. Let's see, writing a proposal, what Paolo said about a proposal of 140 pages, that's because researchers don't know what the summary means or synthetic description means. No, no, sorry, this is a skill that if you want to present, submit proposal, you should learn. And when they tell you, hey, you have three minutes, don't come with 22 slides. It's against common sense to try to squeeze 22 slides in three minutes or 140 pages in a, in a one hour of reading of your, of your evaluator. So please be intelligent. I know that you're very well educated, but on top of that you must be intelligent. Think about the reader. Think about your audience. Because if not, it's a useless game. This is not science. You don't need to prove by means of 22 references that you have done your homework. You need one reference, the good one, and saying, and I'm going to do this because of da da da, and you put facts. This is preparing proposals. But then, this is preparing meetings for the project. This is managing your project. Managing your project means taking care of all these details. Devil is in the details. And when you have a, 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 a round of presentation saying, okay, you have 30 seconds to introduce yourself. And one of the persons spends five minutes. Well, I don't want that person in my consortium for a project. He, don't, he or she doesn't understand the rules of the game. We are all peers. A consortium is a very strange animal. It's a very strange animal because I'm the coordinator. Usually, I'm directing people that are all, all have more PhD than I have because I don't have a PhD, but they have a lot of PhD, they are full professor, that, but they are useless when it is, goes to managing a project. And they think that because they have a long title in their name like this, they are a justification for success of my project. Well, usually that's, they are like a, a piece of lead. This is a different business. There are there are professors which are great, hmm? 
You have, you know, one in Innsbruck, which is marvelous. But because he has two hats, when he's teaching, he's a great professor. But then he put his black, sh black shirt. Hmm? He put the knife in the in between his teeth, and he's a killer. And he's a killer. <laughs> he's Italian. No, 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 no. He's Austrian, as a matter of fact. So this is the kind of game. Sorry, I tried to make it as fun as possible, but out there, there are guys who have mortgages, who have a third or a fourth divorce, so they have a lot of debt, and they need this kind of project. Okay? So it's not that bad. It's not that bad, although this is what it is called from a marketing or economical point of view, a mature market. There's people that have been there making proposals and managing projects for the last 20 years. You have one here, but I'm not the only one. There are people, there are a lot of people, and when they don't have uh, uh, messes, they have great teams like the Germans. The Germans don't have too many messes, but they have huge machines like Fraunhofer, which is, Fraunhofer alone have 5,000 researchers. They have representation in Brussels for themselves. They have the Fraunhofer office in Brussels. They have a team managing project, which is in itself a company with 50 or 60 people. Okay, you are not trying to beat Fraunhofer. You are not trying to beat Telefonica or companies with 200 projects at the same time, or, or, or Universidad Politecnica de Madrid, that has 200 projects at the same time. But you don't want to be like um, a Hungarian university I met a few, year, a few years ago and said, hey Ruben, how you get it? Because we made 500 proposals and we didn't get just not even one. Hey, next time call me and perhaps I give you some hints. I don't know. This is what happens. You have in, in 5,000 proposals you can find so it's a mature market with a strong competitive pressure. Everyone, let's see, there are even times that they, they invite you to a proposal just to avoid that you go with another consortium. And the last day before submitting a proposal, they say, oh, sorry, you're out. Professors, eh? Or the people of all the big companies, they say, don't ever try to get into this call. This call is ours. In a closed building, I never said this. I'm not going to give you more details. But this happens with people. Well, as a matter of fact, it was a very nice lady who said, Ruben, I'm sorry, but we have been working for this call for a long time. We have invested a lot of money, and we don't want people like you bothering around. OK? Believe it or not. We have seasonal players, well-established communities, people. This is very important for researchers, communities. You need to become part of a community. Or if not, you have to have something so sexy, so attractive, so uh, sweet, so, I don't know how to put it, that they will, please come with us. Don't try to be a coordinator. Paolo already told you. It's a nightmare for newcomers. But try to get, hey, we want you in our team. Where you get from? Where did you appear from? Okay? And of course, there is a certain establishment. I already told you some ideas about the establishment. Hey, they don't want newcomers. The people that are already there, they say, hey, we have already made a lot of effort to be here, so please don't bother. Okay? But, you know, it's like trying to play in, in, in a game that is already people there. You, need, you already know it from since you were kids. You have to make room, okay? Use your elbows, use your intelligence, be different. But there are good news. I told you, in the last moments of each framework program, namely, in the end of FP7, everybody's desperate trying to, get, to catch the, the last money, the, the last euros that are hanging around. Great, we can go for that. But be prepared for getting the first monies of age 2020 at the beginning of 2014. Because usually people are so busy counting the money that they already got, 
that they forget that this is a long run race. Okay? There's people that we are already working for with the vision of 2020. Sequence of projects until 2020, which will be 2022. But you have to work in terms of strategy. Please, as a university, don't think in terms of projects. Think in terms of portfolios of projects. One project will not solve the problem for the institution. It's a portfolio, it's a strategy that helps you to understand in the next five, ten years what I want to do and what I don't want to do. This is very important because these projects, and you will see afterward, from the, very big, from the day that you start to prepare the proposal until the day that somebody in the commission sends you a letter and says, oh, you have complied with all the paperwork, the project is finished, sometimes it takes five, six, seven, eight years. Okay? So please bear in mind the kind of time slot that we are talking about. Of course, you as a researcher, as an individual researcher, you want to say, okay, I'm finishing my PhD in Arana, and then I'm going to be assistant professor, da, da, da. okay, try to think in terms of when, where you want to be in 10, 12, in 10, 12 years from now, and which role can research play in your research career. Don't think about, ah, I got a call in six months, or, or a paper in 30 days. Forget that. You have to do it. That's your daily business. Playing with this kind of toy, with this game, requires thinking what you want to do for the next 10 years. And in the next 10 next year, you are not going to be writing a scientific paper. You are going to be supervising your PhD student, PhD student uh, writing the, news, the, 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 the scientific paper. So try to think ahead. And use this as an instrument, as Paolo was saying. It's not an end, it's, a, it's an instrument for doing things that you have to have that plan in your head and in your team and you have to explain it to others. The Eurocrats, the guy working for the commission, they are all, there is a, a jargon that says, and I'm one of them, ah, you are one of the useful, uh, the um, usual suspects. I'm one of the usual suspects. Oh, if Ruben is here, oh, Paolo will come in two minutes. That's the way it works. No, let's bring, let's surprise them. What? I'm bringing this guy from Mars. Well, Mars would be a little bit too far. But somebody from Palestine. Well, but it can be eligible. You, you don't, we can make it. In. Uh, and it's not because it's from Palestine. That's another thing that will come later. But somebody new. Because for them, new means fresh ideas, different way of seeing and things. And those new faces have to understand how the game rules. And this is very important. If you are going to start working on proposals for European funding, think about your family, your friends, your colleagues, the friend of a friend, or whatsoever. Somebody, somewhere, must know somebody in a company. And we need to bring them close to us and try to sit down with them, get a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and say, what ails you? Which are your problems? Not for tomorrow. For the next five years, which are, will be your problems for the growth of the company or your hospital? Which is the problem with the hospital? Not today. I cannot solve it with your, your health uh, system problems for next week. But in 10 years from now, what will happen? that you will let's see you have had a lot of uh, uh, I don't know, real big growth of uh, birth rate or or are, as we have in Europe in Europe what we have the problem is that we have no kids a lot of old people that is not going to work they are not going to create wealth but we need to take care of them and as a matter of fact they are trying to live more years which is really a problem according to one very high official from the International Monetary Fund. The problem is that they eat too much. Well, this is the kind of problem, one of the problems we need to solve. There are two solutions. <laughs> Not uh, <laughs> avoid them to live in so much or improve their quality of life. And there's a business. A business. How we, how we make our 
all people to live better, which among other things will minimize the cost of the health system. Because even just getting them busy avoids them going to the hospital. Because they go to the hospital and it's already, and this is well studied. In Europe, all people go to the hospital because at least they can talk to somebody. Okay? So this is the kind of thing I want you to think about, uh, not just because, ah, uh, my research field, da da da. No, no. Try to solve this kind of things. Okay? You allow interactions? Where interactions? You allow some questions in the middle? Yes, of course. Okay, so the question is, let me say, he's the boss. The uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, people who are not Europeans, so they are not uh, member uh, countries. For the purpose of what I am talking, Palestina is member, is an eligible country. Is an eligible country, not in all courts, in some courts. Now, the question, yeah, 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 for sure. No? Yes. Not in no. Court Either, let's see, it's easy. The state is no, Palestine is yes. For everything. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. But also, should we try to bring a dimension in our proposals as Palestinians that shows that there is European interest, not only Palestinian interest? Let's see, by definition, dealing with this project, yeah. there will never be a Palestinian project here. Come on, you know it, Sierra. Do you think that Sierra is a Palestinian project? No, we said multilingual, multicultural knowledge sharing. So we try to bring, of course, uh, this is how they accepted us, that there is interest. Hey, hey, let's see, let me be blunt, very, uh, uh, I'm trying to be as respectful as possible. I don't care if you are Palestinians. And the guys in Brussels, yeah. they don't, these kind of people, if you go to certain parts of political aid, yes, of course. But if you go to these guys and say, oh, I'm, I'm from Palestina, and he will say, and I'm from Luxembourg, so what? <laughs> no, no, it's as simple as that. Please, get this into your head. You. Being Palestinian is not a, neither a positive or negative thing. Because he told me that Palestina is in the countries which is eligible for funding in this kind of technological research project. Period. So I don't want to hear the word Palestina is not an issue here. It's good news against bad news. Hey, sorry, but good think, ideas again, bad ideas. I mean, the purpose, the goals of the project should contribute to the interest of the European Union. This is my goal. Oh. So if I want to solve a problem that's only uh, interest for Palestinians. It's very simple. Go, the, the commission will say, go to, to, go to Ramallah and get money from the government. Money from there. Which yeah. means we have to... Yeah, it, uh, it has to... Uh, Keep the question, and I will and I will I will demonstrate it. I don't want to use word. I want to use uh, things that you can use afterwards. Because if they, ah, just because Ruben says no, it's not because Ruben says. So, okay, now we start. Let's talk about four steps in creating a proposal. The most important one, and it's, it, let's see, this goes. <coughs> if I put one, two, three, four. Don't start four, two, three, one. Because right now, the mistake that you're creating is because you haven't got into step one. If you learn the rules of the game, you will avoid non, non, non good questions, uh, spoiled effort, wasted effort, time, opportunity. That I, so it's, if you. Let's see, until you master step one, don't go until step two. Until you don't master step two, don't go into, master, into step three and don't go into step four. Sorry, there are shortcuts. You can do, let's see, I'm Mr. Multitasking. I can do three things at the same time, usually bad. <laughs> so try to do one thing at a time. Because, and I will explain you why the number one is so, so, so fundamental. So. I would revisit this one, two, three, four each time, so don't worry. So the first one, learning the rules of the game. This is the most important. Nobody is putting a gun in front of your face to say, you must, 
or not, you go to jail. But if you play, and here is important, you die by what is this written. And what it is written is that Palestine is in a certain list, and United States is in another, in another list. Both can participate. United States cannot get money, but Palestine can get money. As a matter of fact, Israel, for many of Europeans, is not part of Europe. But for somehow reason, Israel is the fifth in the ranking of countries getting money from the European Commission. Perhaps you have more explanation than I have. For me it's very difficult. Well, as a matter of fact, I know one of the reasons. IBM Haifa. So an American company located in Israel is getting more money than most of the Spanish companies. This is part of the game. This is part of the game, understanding that these things occur. Okay? So if the Americans through Haifa can get money, please. Okay? Yeah. It's up to you, as Paolo was saying. It's up to you. It's up to stretching all the rules because, okay, perhaps you don't have the team of lawyers of IBM or, or Microsoft. Microsoft has so many projects funded by the Commission. But on the other hand, the Commission is getting fines to them for using monopoly all the time. How do you understand that? Or the Commission is pushing like hell something called open access. And in Belgium, the Commission is number one customer of Microsoft Office. OK? But in any case, from our side, you preparing proposals. You die by what it is written. If I catch you that you have not read one page in a certain document, you make a mistake. So you must know the rules by heart. Somebody in your team, perhaps not a researcher, because they are not precise in reading, they get concepts, but they don't have the rules, except for the lawyers. The lawyers know about what a rule is. I'm very close to you on that side. The law is the law is law. And for this, the law is written by the Commission. Perhaps you say, well, no, but in my country this is not illegal or this is legal. Well, but the Commission has their own rules. And remember, <clears throat> they are giving you money against the contract. Call it grant. They use the euphemism grant agreement. It's a contract. We are giving you money to do this project. And the, pro the description of the project, the proposal, which is called uh, transforming the contract, is called the DOW, or the technical annex, or the description of work. Call it, all the, the, the technicalities are there. But it is, the contract with the commission is simple, it's four pages. In the first page, or the first paragraph, it says, the commission will co-fund the project called Sierra, or whatsoever, or OCA. Second. The coordinator will get the money and will distribute it in the consortium. And, which is, and all this money is for doing a project described in the so-called Annex 1 of the contract. It's very simple. You do this project according to the Annex 2, which is the peculiar rules that you have to read, which is something about, uh, the last one I read, it was 218 pages of financial guidelines. And somebody must do it. I read them. I read them. I know them by heart. Yeah. Somebody has to do it. Somebody, let's see, that's the reason universities have European project offices. Because they have five or six lawyers who read because there's rules, norms, laws, whatever you call it. Of course, the researcher, we don't allow researchers to touch such important information. They're in the lab. I don't want researchers reading law. Let, if, not even if you are from the law school. They're, those are the words. <laughs> Sorry, this is practice. This is European projects in practice. Because the person that I have in the other side of the table is a bureaucrat that knows that in Annex 2, Article 24.3, they have defined subcontracting as blah, 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 blah. And I know that. The researchers say, oh, subcontracting is when I'm not doing it. You know, a quasi knowledge. 
No, no, but if, if you forget, eventually in cases such as, I don't know what, you die, but what it is written, okay? So please, it's not a joke. I'm not trying to do theater about this. This is the bottom line. If you don't understand the rules under which you are playing, don't play this game. You will end up really bad. But you win by what it is not written. So pay a lot of attention to your national contact point. He knows either where the information is or to whom to ask the question or not. But there are things that he cannot tell you. Either, no, no, because either, because it's not his problem. He's not running projects. So he doesn't understand about certain logistical problems of the projects. Hmm? So those are the ones that you have to get. That's one of the reasons of not being a coordinator in the first project, is because the coordinator is somebody who knows a lot about the tricks of what, well, tricks of operational rules that are not written. But those are the ones that makes you uh, beat your competitors. So be different. And sorry, be saying, hey, I'm from Palestine. That's not being different. Sorry. In this, in this game, the rest of the life, the rest of the world, of course, my, all my respect. But in this line, being from Palestine, because somebody will come and say, sorry, I'm not from Crete. And I'm from Macedonia, and so what? Everybody's banging the door there. No, no, just let's see. Uh, another important recommendation. Don't go there saying something like, very, take me, take me as it is. Eh? Oh, we are poor and we have a lot of problems. Well, go to the place of the commission where they help the poor people. This part, this part is talking about innovation, is talking about research. He's talking about winners. You are playing against SAP, you are playing against IBM, you are playing against the most important uh, European, European universities. In Champion Leagues, the, 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 the team from my, my home city, which is 50,000 inhabitants, will never ever play Champions League. Only Real Madrid goes to, cha to, to Champion League, and this is Champion League. This is the kind of game. This is the kind of game. So, no, you have to go say things that you can say. We are small or we are latecomers. Let's see, but for example, the, the kind of development, the things that I have seen here, the few days that I have been here, with respect to Wi-Fi. You have more Wi-Fi services than in an average medium-sized uh, city in Europe. You have more ATMs that in many, let's say, there are certain places, I don't know, if you go at 9 o'clock in the night in Brussels, you don't get the number of ATM that you have here to get cash. Because you're latecomers. You don't have 200 old banks with huge buildings with hundreds and hundreds of employees that they don't know what to do with them. No, you have to go into, or in rural areas do you, do you have telecommunication. Why? Because you have Wi-Fi. No, there they have just a one single cable that if it rains a little bit, it falls. So you have to learn from those things that you've been a newcomer, that you don't have, uh, you have to be different. You have to find out in which things you are either terribly good because of even you are very good at a lot of things just because you, are in such, you have so many problems. When I talk about this kind of thing, is transforming problems into opportunities. Problem, uh, transforming weaknesses into opportunities. You are in a much better position than an old conventional traditional guy in the middle of nowhere in England that they have been doing the same thing in Italy, for example. They, we have been doing the same thing for the last 400 years, and then we don't want to change. Hey, you cannot go to the commission and say, hey, and we want 6 million euros because we want to change our traditions. No! We want the money because we need to improve things, and here are the way that we have to do it. Be different. Uh, I'm not going to repeat that. Remember that you're not there. 
And let's see, for me, this is terrible at disadvantage because writing proposals is boring. Uh, what I love is to defend them. Usually, you will not be able to defend it. So you need to write a proposal that can defend itself. I already show you many reasons why you have to be patient and flexible, no matter what. But of course, uh, you have to push, push, and push. So let's see where and how to compete. Your national contact point was already explained this morning how to, this is probably step two is, is very difficult. It's much more difficult than step one. Step one is a matter of studying, getting the proper people to, to help you, blah, 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 blah. But where and how to compete is where do I go to ask money for my project? Well, it depends. Let's see, uh, this gentleman here was talking to me about uh, the hospitals. But the other word, there was another person talking to me about education. Well, you can solve a problem in education or in hospital by means of information technology. So perhaps, instead of going to the educational problem that you, I think that you said that for education you have this social... Yeah, okay. Now he's not listening, listen to me. For that thing, they have 22 euros. For information technology, they will have 11 billion. So for the 22 euros, for social science, blah, blah, you will have all Europe competing for 22 euros. If I have to compete with all Europe, I better go to a place that they have plenty of money. So what about thinking, okay, we need to solve this problem with education, and there are these tools, information technology tools, that help me to solve these educational problems, and then you have an information technology proposal prepared to solve an educational problem. And the same happened with the... the so this is the part that where you, I think you have a chance, because it's related to creativity and innovation and solving problems with scarce resources. Hmm? A, a, a conventional French will say, no, this is an educational problem, and it's an educational problem, it's a problem about education. <laughs> they have to smoke funny things to, to be great. Okay? Good? Do we understand? So, are we talking about... Paolo, I am talking properly, domain problem or research field. Is this correct? Acceptable. Thank you. <laughs> Are we talking about big project, a small project? Let's see, why do we have to, let's see for example, I don't like to go to small projects personally. Why? Because I'm already old. And the size of a small project, let's see, the 100% of the problem is the same if the project is small or big. If your budget is 100, you're trying to you spend all your time in solving a problem of 100. But the other side there is a guy with a problem of 100 million, and he spent all his time in solving the problem of 100 million. So I better go with him. Because for you, oh, 100 is already, uh, for me, 100 is nothing. So I better go with there. But depending on the strategy, depending on the strategy, and that's never think in one project at the same time, you might have one big project that is connecting series of small projects. That's called the strategy, how I want to play. That's the reason you have to put together people, as you were saying in the, the association, people from different places with different problems, okay? And we see the problem, the, big, the bigger problem, and then we put the, puzzle, the pieces of the puzzle. The same in the department in the university. Right now, I'm helping a university in young shopping in the south of Sweden, that they have a business school, a material the engineering school, the ICT guys and somebody. And the, the first time that the four teams sit together to talk about European project was when the dummy Ruben went over there. They never talked together. So they didn't have a strategy for the university. Sweden. Hyper duper super first word. 
Pati itong to. Okay? How to go, where to compete, how to compete? Are we a core partner? We are the, the central partner of the consortium? Are we a contributing partner? Hey, we are the guys, let's see, for example, OCA, the Trento, they have these persistent identifiers technology. They are great because they can put their, their contribution in many different projects at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because they are experts in something called, I don't know what, persistent identifiers. Okay? Pack, 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 they put it. And this contribution part can be a specialist because the field of knowledge, or specialist because, for example, these research projects, one of the biggest problems that they have, at least in information and in technologies, is that PhD students student don't want to develop software. Because as they are going to become very important people, they have to, st to start preparing themselves to be very important people. So PhD students don't want to make code. So you need to bring people out of the street that knows how to make code to develop software, and you put them. And you can bring in for a small little company that is a specialist in Java. Or users. We bring the hospital, we bring the association for social work, or, 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 or the entrepreneurial association, but we need to find out the better way of putting it. There are different ways of developing. Usually, the best thing is to have a, a research team that can talk the same language of the real world people and real world people that is willing to listen to these crazy ivory tower researchers. It's a two-way road. It's a two-way road. Let's see, uh, I'm not a researcher, I'm not an academic, but I have been working with professors and academics since 1986 on a permanent basis. I have Few of my best friends are academic ones in, in this room. Uh, I need to understand we have a lot of fights with Paolo, but we can we can understand which is the advantage because I don't want to play the professor and he doesn't want to play the entrepreneur, and it works. But you need to find out those things. So remember, think about your family, your friends people, the friends of friends, start growing that thing. It's not that I am skipping step two. I'm already explaining you how you are preparing to go to step three and four, okay? So, in the end, these projects are about people. Never ever forget that, they are about people. Gathering intelligence, intelligence in the sense of information, knowledge, experience, okay? One of the most important things here for projects is that if you want the commission to get your project funded, is you have to help somebody in the commission. Because the guys here, in, in this part of the components of the idea, there's something called the units, which is the specific part, let's see, there's a unit or a department in the organization of the commission that is dealing with language technologies. There's another dealing with uh, big data or semantic technologies. There is another part dealing with multilingualism or I don't know what. But you have to find out when you read, when you read the word wrong or you read the call for proposals, and you, you find, uh, you read all the, remember what I told you about reading. When you read you find out, ah, okay, this guy, and you put a name and a face. The guy who's dealing with, with semantic technologies is, is a German called da -da -da or an Italian called Stefano Bertolo. Okay, you must, let's see, Stefano Bertolo will have, a, despite what he says, and I'm using Stefano because it's a well-known name for me, but the other guys will, he will know, he must know your project beforehand, and Paolo already explained something about that, and, and, um, and your project must fit not in Stefano Bertolo's agenda, but in the agenda of the unit, hey, because the commission is trying, within semantic technologies, we are trying to fund now projects in the area of manufacturing because in the last year we have been doing in projects in the area of, I don't know, services. Now we need something in manufacturing. So if you bring me a project that deals with manufacturing, I don't know, watches, I'll 
perhaps it's nice, but if you bring me uh, a project dealing with a library, well, no, uh, well, yes, according to the norm, the rules, it might get funded, but if you bring one with watches, much better. He will not say it that way, but you smell it, okay? Now, in the reality, the detailed rules for participation, let's see. Next time we talk, you must know, Mustafa, exactly the state of Palestine in this project. I will not accept a question on that from you. You must know. And of course the rest of you, but you. It's your responsibility. Previous projects. The Commission has been funding projects of this sort for the last years. So just imagine how stupid you will feel that, oh, I'm bringing here my project for their nurses, I don't know what. Oh, yeah, we have already funded 22 of those projects. Why don't you talk directly to those guys? Not knowing, and this stands for state of the art. Okay? Researchers know what state of the art is. Afterwards, I put an additional comment on this. But if in a proposal you don't mention, you don't demonstrate that you clearly know which are the projects that the Commission has been funded or the national European government have been funded which are relevant in the area of your project, your proposal will not fly. Because somebody, an evaluator, will say, hey, these guys are not good because they don't know my project. You know, because the evaluators of these proposals are guys like you. For the good and for the bad. Well, they are they, they think they're experts. <laughs> <laughs> they are human beings. Ah, this proposal is bad because this guy has not mentioned my project. That's ego. As simple as that. So but uh, of course it's expertise, but there's a human component. Remember there are hum human components in this. Okay, so please. Do your homework. And this goes until the very last day of the project. This is part of the project. A proposal is a trial. Remember what I'm going to say now. Writing a proposal, delivering a proposal, is doing the pilot experience of the project. My experience, and I, my shared experience with other guys, says that if the, pro the process of creating a proposal is bad, the project is going to be worse. Hmm? If you have that, that partner that you need a proposal doesn't send his contribution, his chapter, his description during the project, that guy is going to be a stone in your shoe. So sometimes it's better to kill somebody during the proposal. Don't allow him to go into the project because it's easier to drop them from the proposal than from the project. That's the relationship in terms. This is a typical example. When somebody does not deliver during proposal or is con continuously saying, well, and why don't we do it the other way around? In the project, if, if you hate him during the proposal, during the project, you would like to put him to boil with water. So, and this is after 20 something years, I think that uh, I, I can put my hand over the fire on this kind of thing. Hmm? Uh, this is very important. So when you start, that's the reason, I, among other things, steps one, two, and three, because step three, about gathering intelligence. I put it with a smile here, but before, you know, it's like before getting married, try to know if he or she, I don't know what. <laughs> now you use LinkedIn, but in my times it was Google. But if you start to get bad reviews, go to TripAdvisor. If somebody, everybody's saying, don't go to that hotel, why are you going to that hotel? Even if it, if it is cheap, don't go. <laughs> Crowdsourcing, right? You see, this is very, very important because I will show you afterwards. You are planning. As I said, a project lasts for years. 
And that means the consortium. Okay. And expected, expected. The evaluation criteria, Paolo already mentioned, I think that you already mentioned. Remember the word innovation, this is very important. The evaluation criteria, somebody asked me, hey, having the support from the government, I don't care. These are the evaluation criteria, they are written. They are written, remember, and you lose and you die for what it is written. So if you don't take, if you consider other evaluation criteria different than this, you are making a big mistake. Building up the team, now you know who want to invite. Remember, this is very, very use, usual. People try to get, ah, oh, we have this consortium, which was going to be our new project. Forget it. Forget it. I allow you to bring 30 percent of the old consortium to a new project because it's good to have at least three out of ten partners that already know how to work with you. Getting a, 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 in a project of four years, usually the first year is spent in knowing each other and understanding how to work together. So if you have a critical mass of guys that, and there are things that with Paolo, if I say like this, he knows, ah, five. Well, yeah, he's very talented, but uh, things that I, with it, with it, very quickly. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, with all these people and they want me to make decisions. Okay, no, let's see, I'm going to do something much better. Uh, they're saying here that uh, the food is ready. Uh, so there is the alternative that we stop for lunch and we continue after lunch. It's a good idea. How much do you still need? Uh, let's see, I've been told that I have, been to, to have to be in the airport three hours before the plane and my plane leaves tomorrow at five. <laughs> Okay, do you, let's see, do you think that is for me, I'm suffering here? So, you know where, where, you know where I, when I stop, usually, when half of the room is, is empty. So it's up to you. No, 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 let's see, uh, I will not kill you. Let's see, we can stop for lunch now. If it's like around 10 minutes, right? No, 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 it's not going to be 10 minutes. Hey, it's not going to be 10 minutes. I'm, uh, I'm about uh, half of the slides that I have. No, two thirds. So that's one third of my slides. But uh, I want to stop talking as soon as possible within certain limit because I want you to talk. The, what it is remaining, the most important part of what it is remaining is after all the hinges and hits and what I have been saying, trying to mobilize you, I need you to talk. I, I, I send you to write questions, but afterwards I want you to, to, to discuss and say, hey Ruben, no, but, but, however, or oh, I don't know, and let's fight on those ones, because that's your own reality is that you want to go back. Can we make it a short lunch break? 25, 30 I'm Spaniard, with an hour and a half is going to be more than five. Okay, so we go just... Go okay, it's 105. But maybe you finish step number four. It's the last step of the four steps you talked about, it's right? And then okay, you let's see. I, okay, that's... She's wow. intelligent. <laughs> no, I mean it's a good... Hey, 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 don't be trying to justify it. I already said that I'm your intelligent. What do you want? I'm not going to pay you. Okay, thank you. So, important. Team for a project. Usually people ask, how many partners? The needed ones. But are, are, you need, as if, if you believe me, that you need a team for a project, you need a project. But you cannot write the entire project before going to get all the partners. So, you have here is the proof, the proof of success. You must put the entire proposal in two pages. 
and please not using Times Roman 6. <laughs> huh? uh, and between lines and writing on the edge of the page, no. Hey, time, time Roman 12, space 1, one side of the paper. Sorry, I'm European, I waste things. Forget about this, the other part. If you cannot convince me to pay attention to what you're saying with just one page, okay? So that's, that's the thing, the magnet around which to create a team. Because if you bring already the team and you put a page, something is going to get spoiled. But if I say, it's something like, I, I hate to say this, but, oh, I believe in this. And you will fight for that. If I put you, okay, team, today we are doing this project, this new project. Oh, business as usual. No, get something to get people in the level of passion. Of course, there are official criteria for selecting partners. And it's written everywhere. Okay, then. okay, take those official things like competencies, overlapping, blah, blah, blah. Of course. Of course. It is written, somebody very intelligent wrote it, so. Be pragmatic. There's, for example, there's people that I have been working with for several years, but I will never ever go on holidays with them. <laughs> and there are people that I have met and worked very few days or even hours, and we spend until three o'clock talking about the future of Europe or whatsoever. Even without drinking anything in spring. <laughs> people that is reliable. People that when you say, hey, Let's meet, or let's, fi let's, let's finish 1.30, and they finish 1.30. Or if not, they say, okay, let's finish today 1.30, but we are going to reassume doing I don't know what. Or if you say, okay, let's meet in Brussels next week, somewhere there's a second call saying, okay, tomorrow we are both in Brussels. It's uh, Grand Place at 5 o'clock. Good. People that you know, that you can left your back uncovered and those guys are going to be there. Of course, you have to smell the air because it's the first time you see a lot of people willing, uh, I don't know, that's the reason you always have 30% of the consortium with people you already know. And if you get, uh, and one of each of the 30% of the brings two persons that they trust, Okay, I usually trust the friends of Paolo until I have reason, but usually we'll get to the conclusion, the two of us will get to the conclusion, this time I make a mistake bringing this guy, but because this is the way it works, because it's people. There are institutions, that are, but it is people, and it's people that you have to work for them for many years. Okay? And I stop there. Okay, so 135, you Thank you. 135. Okay, thank you for your patience. Let's um, go into the final issue of, uh, of the agenda that I had prepared for today. So let's talk about delivering. We talk about creating, thinking about how, which is the proposal we want to submit to get the funding from the Commission. Now, let's go into, into making it real. And as I was saying earlier this morning, preparing a proposal is already a pilot experience for the project. And it should be taken like that because Anything that it doesn't work properly in the in the proposal, it definitely would work much worse during the project. Okay, so writing a killer proposal. In general terms, 
Don't waste your time in a proposal that is not intended to be a winner. Just, ah, for the sake of, let's see how, no. For the very first day, try to play, let's see, you're playing Champions League. So that means that you have been preparing proposals for other things before. So if you're going to, let's see, uh, a, a proposal of a hundred and something pages is a hundreds of hours of work. So don't get engaged in that effort if you don't think you are going to do a great job. So it is very intelligent to decide, hey, this proposal is not worth being made. Okay? There, let's see, I was during lunch break, somebody saying, telling me, asking me about lines of, of, of help. There are thousands. Usually, and this, I'm not very popular when I say this, the problem is not money. There is money somewhere. The problem was usually missing is good projects. There's more money that projects. They end up doing strange things like that hotel in Jericho, the Intercontinental is Jericho. Just if they, there is not a, a better idea. Okay? So the problem is not the money, it's the ideas, it's the projects, it's the proposals, it's the solutions. So if we go to, 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 um, to compete against 15 or 20 proposals, big proposals, or 140 small proposals, we better have a killer proposal. And what is a killer proposal? There are many definitions. I'm going to use a very simple one. A killer proposal, and I'm trying to get, I hope you remember that, your national contact point and your and Paolo were talking about criteria. I showed very briefly. Uh, Paolo said that the scientific and technological excellence of the proposal was a must, but it was not enough. And it was a one third. Well, this is the and he was talking about from zero till to five with threshold in three point five. Well, a threshold is a threshold. You have to be over threshold. And nowadays, nowadays, you need to be, to have at least a killer one. A one that cannot fail. It has to be over 4.5 in each of them because, and let's see, if you don't get on top of 3.5 on, on any, you can have five, five, and you have three, and the proposal is out. In my, in one, in, I have in the last month I have two proposals that one got a 13.5 and the other got a 13 and none of them were funded. So you have to be over 14 which means a very narrow a very narrow mistake with respect to the target. So the target, remember I said before, hey, you need to understand what the unit, what the people that are funding, the type of project you're intending, what kind of product, projects they are intended to fund. So if you can have the, the greatest proposal, if that they are not interested, they will find their way not to fund it. Okay? Why? Because somebody is already doing the job of going over there, asking what kind of project, do I show you this, what happens instead of doing it this way, I do it that way, or doing this, which is this approach, here's all, let's see, doing your homework, all these things that I, or doing the one, two, three, four that I explained before, gathering the intelligence, gathering the team, everything having the two-pager. You, you go to the two-pager with the guys of the commission, and start talking with them, and they will say, oh yeah, great, but we have already funded three projects of the same type. Why don't you talk directly to them, and you get the results with them? Or you build on top of the results of those guys. <sighs> the implementation is, is what it is called the management. Well, it's two things. 
SET, the scientific and technological excellence, is the um, it is the academic, the research part. The implementation is two things: the management and the and the consortium. And the impact is the positive effects of the results of the projects beyond the scope of the project. That's the original definition, which means if somebody goes outside and see what the result of your project, what we, they will see. Houses being built, uh, new, new system of bottling, new system of managing the... the what do, something tangible that can be measurable. If you cannot measure the impact, it's not the impact. It's wishful thinking. Oh, yes, but it has qualitatively improved. Well, sorry. Qualitatively ain't work. Because they are giving you quantitative money, no qualitative money. Okay? Do we agree? I, I know that I'm not being polite, and I'm bothering you with this kind of thing, but somebody told me, hey, Ruben, help us to write competitive proposals. What I'm trying to explain you is how to make a proposal that wins, not a proposal that it is elegant or I don't know what. You want the money, you're here for the money, not for other things. If not, you will be in a, in a seminar on I don't know what. This is about money and being effective in asking for money. So, what I use is just the evaluation criteria. In this evaluation criteria, it doesn't come that, oh yes, it's important because we are dealing with health, or we are from Palestine, or we are from small companies, or... No, it deals with these three things, sorry. This is the criteria. Those are the criteria. Uh, you are a very good friend, but if you don't pay, you don't get in. Oh, you are my sister, but sorry. You have to sign. If you don't sign, you're not king. It's, it's, it, it, this is the way it works. It's either you take it or you leave it. Nobody's forcing you to get into this into this game. Okay, these are real results, actual results from one call. <laughs> remember, if you put the, the, the thresholds, remember the 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, it gets you somewhere here. Okay? Out of hmm, number of proposals for each score. You see, Gauss, Ben, as always, most of them are here. And I told you, you have to be here. If you want to kill, if you want to win. These compete. All these guys compete. Well, not, not this. Well, watch. Because you don't see many really bad proposals. Hmm? You don't see many bad proposals. Most of them are here. So which why? Because it's people like you, people that knows their business, hmm? that in their research field they are very good or quite good, hmm? or perhaps, well, okay, they don't create a good consortium, or they didn't have time because they were working with several proposals, I don't know what, but they end up here. That means no money. You have to be here. Okay? This is not Ruben said. This is statistic, as a matter of fact, from the the Italian National Contact Point last year. So this is totally real thing. So are we starting to create the proposals? So first of all, why to bother? You see, you have this. Usually the starting point is, as Paolo says, ha, ah, today at breakfast I got this bright idea. Or perhaps during a nice workshop or, or, or a summer school or, or I don't know what, or we met three guys in the same room that, ah, it would be great if we combine your expertise with my field, with this new blah, 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 blah. a proposal in a napkin. It ends up a proposal in a napkin. Okay, great. The biggest ideas in this world has been written in a napkin. The contract of Messi for Barcelona was written in a, back, in a napkin. So no problem. The trick is what happens after the napkin. Some throw it into the floor, some goes into this kind of thing. So start making yourself the right questions. 
before asking others, say, hey, do I have a case? Can I put this into two pages? And let's see, somebody asking, was asking, hey, what about the, the impact only in Palestine? The first thing that the European guys, the commission say, is this a European project? Is a European problem? Because it's usually, with Palestine it's very small, but uh, imagine a German with 80 million Germans, oh, this is a great problem for Germany. And for France, I don't care about France. Well, and then go to Berlin and ask Angela for the money. Why do you bother here in Brussels? So you need to sit down, and this is another thing. Are you prepared to sit down with a French to discuss cooperation? And with a crazy Spaniard or a lazy Italian? Because you're going to be working with for five years on this thing. I know because, for example, there's a huge, it's very famous, the, the, the fights between the French and the German, the German and the French. But you cannot imagine the fights between the Swedish and the Germans. Hmm? Who's most macho? Well, the German. No, the Swedish will be the terrible in, in disagreeing with that. Hmm? So these are the kind of things that you have to put all the, that's the reason I said step one, step two, step three, step four. Don't go for the shortcut because you have a friend. Because you're not working with one project, you're working with a portfolio, you're trying to get a methodology, you're trying to get an approach. And one single project usually fails. If you have a strategy behind, you have some chance. Of course, doing yours in the part of the getting the intelligence, is the solution already available? Me not knowing the answer means nothing. Because for the European guy, and with Google, and with all the databases of projects that they have already solved, funded, make sure that you are able, able to say, we have been doing all this investigation, we have talked to the people that are the key guys in, the, in, the, in, in this field, and so far, as a matter of fact, in the last conference, which is the conference for my domain, it was the, the, the keynote speaker was saying, as a matter of fact, the next challenge is to ba 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 ba. And as a matter of fact, this is one of the things I want to do. Contribute to helping that. Because this will solve da da da. This is the kind of explanation that you need to have. Don't, please don't put, I, I'm tired of watching proposals that the list of references is bigger than the proposal. That just, because I, uh, just because other guy wrote it and published it, it's true. Well, I don't know. That's, that's what uh, Newton used to say about stepping on the shoulders of giants. That's good science. But not replacing. Because of course, it's easier, instead of stepping on the shoulder of the giants, hey, let's bring the giants. <laughs> it's easier. But you don't get the money for that, okay? So, the solution available. And of course, please, never submit a proposal of research that you have seen your solution in an ad in the newspaper. That's embarrassing, but of yours. Ah, but our system is different because, because instead of being vertical, we put it horizontal. Well, okay, I just twist the, 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 the picture at 90 degrees and it's done. If somebody's already selling my solution, for him, it's going to be much easier to put it 90 degrees that for me to spend four years in the lab trying to learn how to do it. This, having seen hundreds of proposals, one of the things that mostly impact me is the lack of common sense. Very usual among well, very well educated people. They get in such a level of abstraction that they said, oh, the machine is not working due to the consequence of the global warming. No, it's just because I didn't plug it. Okay? 
Sometimes, this is the, the, the key about the two-pager. If you cannot put a compelling argument in two pages, forget it. Or get somebody that you can sp speak with he or she for hours, and he or she comes back the next day with two pages. And you recognize your own idea in those two pages, not like Paolo says, and I don't even recognize that was the, no, no. If the guy is good, you should come, he should come back with two pages because he forgets to say, to justify, remember, this is very, very important. What I'm saying, this is not science, it is about getting money for, for funding science, is that this is not a scientific paper, and of course, it is not a thesis. So you don't need to justify why did you put that name with capital letter or with low letter. Okay? It's a commercial proposal. Hey, if you give me that money, I'll provide you with these results, which provide the same fact. Okay? It's not because you have, I have 200 references. What happens, what happens, and allow me, what happens in the end, that all these things that I'm talking that they were saying that I'm against the research, no, they, I really have to translate. What happens in practice, and Paolo, please say that what I'm saying is true, that people spend 85% of the hundreds of hours of the proposal just in this, and they write this the day before, the afternoon before, the proposal is delivered. <laughs> and, they, and they expect Ruben to write this part, that as a matter of fact, this part takes 80% of the volume of the proposal because it's on the formal part, the description of the partner, the blah, 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 something that it is already apparently canned and it has no creativity. And it's usually the only one that gets the five. Why? Because I'm, I'm prepared to, to read, to write what they want to read. But in this part, I have seen, I have seen in a very recent proposal, how 96 hours, 96 hours before the proposal was submitted, that the entire, there was an entire discussion about the core concept of the project. What about if we do it that way? No, 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 no. We have been saying that we are going that direction. Yes, but. In the, for the sake of uh, completeness of the argument, uh, please, please, if you don't get the five here, forget it. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the way proposal has to be written is what problem I want to solve, and in order to solve this problem, which is the breakthrough solution that I will create, and how I am going to organize the words to make sure that this impact actually occurs. Usually, people forget about these two parts and they go into the super duper level of the key word, of the specific word, should I say comprehensive, integrative, integral, or I don't know what, in the page 42 of the work plan, and they forget to explain that all that work would benefit somewhere in some, in some way. This is what actually happened. And if not, please review your recent projects or the experiences that you have about projects. And this is what I, this is not doing that thing will never get this. Okay? So, the check-in list. Very simple. This is the kind of thing that you don't even have to learn. Just keep it there as a checklist. So we go for the three. Remember, I'm, I'm, I'm pivoting around the three, around the three uh, evaluation criteria. And this is when each time that I go for these things, remember there is a concept, there is an implementation, and there is a management, and there is a delivery of results. And you always go backwards. Think about the result, think what you have to, which are the variables that you have to manage. Because in certain times, let's see, for example, there are certain projects that, um, 
if if you end up with a PowerPoint uh, presentation, it's not going to fly. It's not going to run. So you need to have something that is going to be published in the internet and is going to be working. And if somebody, let's say, I don't know, just imagine that you create the new search engine for the health system. Well, you have to have something that shows that a, 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 a early adopter of that technology makes a question, it gets an answer. And for that, when you start going backwards, it's OK, but then I need somebody that can create something in the internet. And for that, I need somebody who needs Java. OK, so sorry, I don't need the hyper duper soup. I don't need Teams Berners-Lee for the project, the creator of the, of what? Ah, yes, that, that's it, the web. I don't need him. I need somebody that can create code that I can show the, the commission and also the, this, the, this gentleman from the hospital that our super duper innovative idea, when you make, hey, which is the nearest hospital, it renders an answer. Okay? But in any case, the quality is funny because sometimes, but sometimes, most of the time the, communion, the commission is very, uh, how do you say, it? vague. Well, I told you that scientific and technological was one of the three basic. These are the four elements, four elements that define the excellence of the scientific and technical of so and I, these are not my words the black the, in black is not my words it's commission words what do you mean by quality here my friends is when you have to go and say okay in this domain in my specific domain what do you understand by scientific and technical ex uh, quality well in the call in the call for proposal they put some topics but when you go into the words of the, of the, of the call, there are still question marks. That's the reason. Before starting to write, you need to ask, hey, what do you mean by this? You have your two pages. You go and ask. You understand. You discuss with them. And you understand. And you start to write, being able to write, thinking in a reader. Because usually when you write, you're not thinking. Let's see, all, all of us, when we write, we are not thinking in the reader. Only people with very good training in public writing understand the journalist, typically. They know what, that they write for an audience. Well, this is what you need to do, because you are not there to explain how, why your proposal is so bright. Your proposal must stop for you. OK? Very briefly, not 200 pages, please. So, but it has to be relevant. Then, the concept of objective, clear objective, there is this thing about smart objective, okay? Objectives that are measurable, that are attainable, that are realistic, that are specific, and that are timely. So you need to get, say, I'm going to find a, with this project I'm going to find a way of putting water with 30% less cost in less than three years. For example, because there's a problem here with I don't know, and it's explain, but it is not, oh, I will love that it will be cheaper to get water for everybody. Well, sorry, that's wishful thinking. That's wishful thinking. And I'm asking you which are the results that you're going to get after you complete the project in 48 months. Please tell me, if I ask you that, when you write your proposal, you have to imagine what's going to happen in four years' time when I finish the project. Okay, when I finish the project, and don't tell me, well, Ruben, you're crazy. This is research. I'm not pretty sure that it's going to work. Well, sorry. This is what they're asking. So I have a, I have a, a top-level guy from the commission that says, if you don't know it, fake it. Of course, I'm not going to give his name, but make a good storytelling. Don't, don't say, oh, we are going to be lucky hmm? and an angel will come. No. No. 
or let's see, we are going to team together with Paolo and three more friends and two here from guys from here, and we will create a football team. And in next winter, we are going to be playing Barcelona, and we are going to beat them. Are you smoking funny things? No. But if you say, hey, Paolo got a lot of money because he's a friend of our prince that have millions, okay, we are going to buy Messi, Ronaldo, uh, da, 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 and Schumacher. Well, Schumacher, no, perhaps not, but... Uh, <laughs> but he has so much money that we can bring Schumacher just to clap his hands. I don't know, just put me something that gives a realistic chance that what I'm thinking, first of all, show me a proposal. You know what a, propo a killer proposal is? Proposal killer is a proposal that tells a story that, hey, there is a problem with management of the hospitals. We have seen it because we have talked with in Madrid, in Palestine, in Geneva, and I don't know where, and even there are very different contexts. There is a problem with the ambulances. We have a problem with the ambulances because they spend too much, I don't know what. So we are going to create an information management system for, uh, with the GPS and this, this, da, 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 to make the management of ambulances much more efficient and that will provide a savings in the order of between 3 and 7% of the cost of the annual services of, of the ambulances. That will go into 7% in the case of Palestinian because their system is very young, or it's going to be a 3% in the German case because it's already well, well suited. I don't know. And for doing that, we are going to work on this, on this, on this, on this. And for working, doing this job, we are going to bring hmm, a work plan. We, are, we need to bring guys which are specialists in ambulances. Guys who are specialists in communications between buildings and cars. And I don't know what, da, 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 da. And we are going to do this sequence. Show them that you understand the problem, that you have a very clear vision on the solution, and you have the best educated guess about what is going to happen five years late, uh, three years after the project is finished, if an educated person goes to visit all these five hospitals and he, he sees the figures. What this guy will see in five years? Sorry if it's science fiction for you, but there are people who are doing this kind of proposals and they're winning. So if Barcelona is playing football in a certain way and you want to beat Barcelona, at least you have to play like Barcelona. Look, Italy and Germany, they're trying to play like Spain. <laughs> Sorry, watch Italy the other day, they were playing the ball all the way around like the boring Spain. This is, this, is the, this is the name of the game, please. Okay, and of course, you have to show what I, I told you before, that hey, and nobody has done this with the, 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 the ambulance so far. They, what they have tried, for example, is to change the engines of the ambulances, or I don't know what, or, but this, what we are proposing, as far as we heard in the last uh, World Congress on Ambulance Management, it is still a, a problem to be solved. That's a winning proposal. So, this is what they look, you see, what I was talking Aims, motivation, hypothesis, the objective, realistic. Remember the state of the art? Usually you demonstrate the state of the art by the publications in well, in reputed uh, journals. Okay? But what's going on in the real world? What's happened with the ambulances in the real world? Because sometimes the real world is more advanced than research, okay? Or if not, it's doing. For example, people, uh, for those of you who are close to ICT, everybody is complaining about Google having half a million computers doing a stupid job that if you use a very intelligent semantic tool, uh, it will be, you will not need those 500, 500,000 computers. Well, but Google is making a lot of money out of that, so 
and it's everywhere. People think it's a standard, so you better be be careful before saying, "Hey, we are better than Google." Especially if you don't have the uh, the, the bank account they have. In current times, is what it, it, sorry, it's what it is. So, the other ideas I think that are more than clear, but. The users, okay, let's see, there's another important thing. Users, I don't know in other technologies. In IT, people use this idea of use cases, the users, okay. The users are not necessarily the customers. The one, the person who, uh, or uh, yeah, a person who uses a technology not necessarily has bought it. For example, the management of a hospital might be the user but the one who buys the equipment for the hospital is not even in the hospital. So, of course you have to take care of the user, but you have to put an additional requirement in, in your proposal. Is that the solution that I am proposing can be acceptable or takes into account the needs of the one making the decision of adopting such technology. Okay? Those are the, these kind of things are the are of course some of them are threshold, are requirement. Don't do don't do the proposal if you cannot solve this. But in other terms, is out of my experience of the people or the experience of people I have been working with, which are those things that make you a little bit different. Okay. Implementation. Implementation. Well, as I said, was the management of the project. You start to manage the project in the very day that you start to prepare the proposal. If you believe me that the proposal, if accepted, will become part of the contract of the grant agreement called under the denomination of description of work or technical annex, you better what you write in the proposal, at the proposal level is an opportunity, it's a promise, and this is typically a lot of people that wins projects by having pr successful proposals, they end up saying, how did I promise that in the proposal now? I have a project, I don't know how to do it. Well, this is a typical management mistake. Don't promise things that you cannot comply with afterwards. Because you will end up that instead of having a losing proposal, you will have the risk of the commission sending the lawyers to you. Okay? So be creative, but don't be stupid. So, you need to have management and structure and procedures. Well, this is typically, people think that because they, they create this chart where you have the, the super duper boss, the second level boss, and the third level boss, is done. No. That's not enough. You need to explain the proposal that you have a clear understanding on how this structure will work if, for example, the work package leader one, which is from University A, and the work package leader uh, three from University C cannot sit in the same table because they hate or one, that one wants to do the work vertical and the other one wants to do the work horizontal. This is typical. Well, you have to solve this. First of all, beforehand, when created the consortium, don't put together in the same consortium two guys that have been the husband of the same wife in different times of life. <laughs> and I have at least one case. <laughs> Hmm? Because the one that, you know, who is the one in charge? The wife, of course. Okay? Don't do those things. Those, that's, that shows a tremendous lack of common sense. Hmm? The individual participants is what I was saying. The consortium as a whole. One of the things that they are going to be evaluating is how how can these guys can work together as a consortium? A consortium is a very strange animal. It's, 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 it's a bus full of egos going nowhere for a very short period of time. 
When you prepare a proposal, you already know that it is a team of people that will not work together anymore once the project is finished, most of the time. So you need to, you need to first of all, you need to say those things. Hmm? You need to say those things, which is the rules of the game. Imagine that we are going to be a consortium. This table, like it is right now, will never ever be repeated. It would be quite unlikely that this table, like it is, is going to be. Imagine this during six months or two years or four years, and after that, one day we say, Father, well, hey, you need to be prepared to do that. <coughs> and you need to show in the proposal that you are aware of those things, and you did it on purpose. Hey, I put the, girl, the ladies on this side, the guys on that side, because they can keep eye contact. Or I put it the other way around because I want to avoid eye contact or whatsoever. If you explain that you, let's say you have to demonstrate that you have thought about this thing and that you know which is the solution or which is the best solution for the case. And of course, you have, you have heard, I have talked nothing about science or research because I take that for granted. Because what in this project, the most abundant resource is researchers. <laughs> most of the people that work in these projects are researchers. That's the reason when I show you the the the, the, the bell, the bell, uh, the, 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 the bell of the of the proposals, why it is like it is? Because eighty percent of those guys think alike because they all study with the same books, and they go to the same conferences, and they talk the same language. When I say be different, is because you at least try to avoid the central part part of the bell. I don't know how you do it. But don't be in the central part of the bell. Do you understand that? If you can take that home, just remember the bell. The rest, you will find it is written somewhere. Resources to be committed. Of course, this is this uh, mundane thing about the money and the personal. This is a stupid thing that this is a very common mistake that a lot of people do with these projects when doing a working on the resources. They start doing the budget with person months. I can show you and you can verify that person months only represent between 60 and 70 percent of the total cost of a project. The other 30 percent, it is not in your, in, in your head, which is the overhead, the traveling, the da 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 da, da many things. First of all, you are missing 30 percent. And the other thing that people, when doing um, budgets for proposals, make a great mistake is that they, assume, they make the assumption, very stupidly, that the cost of the person months is equal across all the partners of a consortium. And I can show you that the person months of a Swedish engineer and an engineer in Greece are different by a 300 to a 400 percent. And if you put one person month of one guy equal to a one person month of the other guy, you make a damn mistake at the proposal that is reflected in the project for five years. So the Greek is terribly pissed off because he has to work four times to get the same money. And he will not get it because the budget is made on the basis of person month. This is a very silly, stupid thing that kills 60% of, of the consortium. Okay? And it usually only understood when the project is already going. And create tensions and people, let's see, when, when Paolo was saying, oh, you have to check that people send their contribution, their deliverables. When somebody is not sending their deliverables or not wanting to go to a, a, a meeting or not wanting to do something, is because he's a bad person or he's stupid? No, there was something that made this guy to be uncomfortable. And researchers usually don't, don't understand because, as a matter of fact, they are so polite and they are such good manners that they forget to talk about these nasty details, say, hey, who's paying for the taxi? Okay? So remember, this is about money, it's not about research, it's not about academics, it's not about your dean, it's not about 
uh, the, the president of your hospital or the president of your association. It's about getting money to do a job. Okay? What they look, I already gave you more or less the hmm? clear communication. Well, this, for example, I have a, with all this technology, people sometimes forget about human beings. We have a project that we have 32 partners, four years, seven million euros. And this genius, a guy who has a title of member of the British Empire, so somebody a distinguished uh, scientist, he said, as this project is a network of excellence, we are a network, we are all equal, we all have our same responsibilities, so I, I create a wiki, and everybody takes care of his own responsibilities through a wiki. Bye! That was it! The commission right now is saying either you modify entirely the management of the project or we cancel the project in four months from now. Please, can, how can you leave a wiki to manage a group of 32 big egos plus 30 PhD behind? It's impossible. Well, people think this is, 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 is such a lack of common sense. We only discovered this last week when this, when this guy naively said, well, I thought, uh, oh, you know, we're British. I know that, that we are a network. Everybody will know how, what have to do. Well, certainly not. Certainly not. And this happened last week. Hmm? It's not theory, it's not written, it's not, of course, it's, I cannot tell it officially, but I'm still pissed off with that thing. So, please, hey, now it's with a wiki. But in the last 10 years, it was with the email and the mailing list. All those are enemies of people. They're evil. They're worse than Google. Pick up the telephone. Talk to people. Hey, I don't understand what you're saying. Oh, well, I wanted... Well, I have seen German guys sending 22 emails to explain what he was not intending to say. Hey, I don't want to say that you are fat. And Jack was saying that the lift, the elevator was with the excess of load. Yeah. Period. Peace. Common sense. <sighs> Impact. Well, for me, sorry, you know, I'm a market research guy. I'm a marketing guy. I'm a, not a researcher. Uh, and I have always understood that these projects were an instrument for a certain benefit of society, that the European Commission was pouring thousands and thousands and thousands of millions of euros to improve either the way the European citizens live, either the, how the European companies could compete better in this innovation emergency, or even how research could be improved for the sake of humanity, but looking at some time. But this has been neglected. I have heard last year in a conference of guys saying, well, we need to create our strategic research agenda so the European Commission can keep up funding our scientific dreams. Well, sorry, if you have dreams, you get somebody very rich close to you and say, hey, I got the dream. No, sorry, this is not, let's see, taxpayers are already fed up with dreams like with the, 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 these huge projects that go nowhere, at a li different level, you are not. You have to be responsible, and you need to say, okay, I do this. Let's see, among ten possible research projects, well, I, perhaps I cannot fund with this money the most, the most interesting, my baby, but I can fund this and this and this, and I will find out if I'm intelligent. Uh, Above of being educated, I'm intelligent, I can use this project to help me going to get my dream. But please don't say, hey, I need my dream and I don't care about the rest. Sorry, the bad news is that party has already finished. The politicians don't want that party anymore. So you need to explain the overall description, you need to explain, they already foresee certain impact. The commission 
already foresee certain impacts derived from the projects they want to fund. So check, read what they want to fund. The dissemination and exploitation. This is jargon. Dissemination is sharing the result of the project with people outside the, con the, the consortium. Uh, and this is a legal definition. Sharing the, con the results of a project outside the consortium. While exploitation is describing the future use of the result of the project, especially when the project is finished. The day after the project, is, let's see, while the project is being working, I go to conference, I publish papers, but I have to have, again here, please don't explain the commission that you're going to publish here and there, because they know the trick about publish or perish, because you don't get better grading in your university if you don't publish. They already know that. No, try to explain why are you going to publish here and there, and which are the benefits besides the citation and all that kind of, they already know that. So try to be a little bit more, let's see, uh, imagine that you are working uh, towards a better system for the ambulances, and you don't go to any conferences of the hospital industry to explain hospital managers that you have a potential tool for solving the problem with the ambulances. Come on, how, you, how, how do you think there's going to be impact if the guys who are to decide which is the new system of working with the ambulance, they don't know that somebody in a lab somewhere there is preparing something for them. They, they, the commission takes for granted that you're going to publish and that you're going to be doing a lot of tourism, going to conferences in, 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 in the Mediterranean, well, not in the Mediterranean for you, but let's see, the people of the north, they love to create other conferences in Heraklion, in Crete, in, 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 in places with great beaches. I don't know how, but they do it. They never go to those nasty places where there's nothing else to do than go to a conference. They know that. So please be different. Okay? Uh, well, management of intellectual property, we already talked about this. The basic, the basic science about intellectual property is the one that works on the development of certain parties, the owner of the, of the rights, and the rest is negotiation during construction agreement. And this is what they look. Hey, impact. Please be different. Explain impact in real world parameters. For example, there is a, a very clear pattern parameter that the scientists usually don't know how to use, but the real world people know how to use, which is called euros, dollars, money. Hey, something more than percentage. Anybody can use percentage. But if you say three percentage of 400 million is, I don't know which number. Level of impact, explain how, exp show these kind of things is showing that you have thought about this. This makes a clear, a, a, a killing proposal from this perspective. So, we were talking about delivering a proposal. After we deliver the proposal, remember, it's going to happen, it happens even to the expert. The last proposal, we spent 36 hours, four guys without sleeping to send the proposal after one year of working the proposal. Shit happens. This kind of thing happens, try to avoid it, but be prepared that the last day is going to work like that. But you have delivered, then you go to the evaluation and the negotiation, nothing to do from your side. Look at the size of the, of the arrows. But the important thing is the project execution. The, if I said that the project is a means for a purpose, imagine a proposal. A proposal is nothing. Hmm? It's just a means for a means. So delivering the proposal is something between 6 and 12 months. The evaluation is not in your hands, mostly it's between 4 and 6 months. But the, the project is already much bigger than the proposal. So the, propo the problem is not the proposal. The proposal is preparing for the project. Because remember, we don't create proposals that are not winners. We don't create proposals which are not intended to be winners. So you need to start working here and go behind, okay? So going from proposal to project is transforming 
promises into challenges, is promises into contractual obligations. It's not more fun. It's dealing with partners and it's a lot of work. That's the trick. But we can have, hopefully, the idea is to create great results and of course a lot of fun. Fun in professional terms. But remember, you're going to be there for many, many, many months. And one of the best uh, advices that uh, um, I can give you is try to have fun, because if not, it's very difficult to sustain the effort. It is a lot of times along the project that you will end up saying, what am I doing here? For which purpose? Why I'm taking dinner with this guy from I don't know which country, which is really an idiot. You might you must have a reason for that. Okay? So thank you very, very much. I got to, 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 to sustain some debate and some questions, or you want to leave as as soon as possible. Okay, what I will take is the silence as, uh, if you stay, it's because you want to stay. I have some question here in a piece of paper, but if somebody else has, if not, I'm going to, I'm going to, first of all, take care of the, of the, of the one who, who follow my advice. <laughs> well, the politicians play, which is the role that politicians play? They have to help. They have to help. Let's see, if you, honestly, if you cannot convince your local politicians, forget about trying to convince somebody in Brussels. Your local politician, you likely will know what he or she would like to drink or to eat, or at what part of the day you can talk, and you will talk in your local language. And you have to do that. I said, ah, well, think a little bit about that. Think a little bit about that. It is always better to have them on our side. So, and it is the cheaper, is the cheaper effort because they are close to us. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> this problem about choosing choosing partners, let's see, if, I, if you don't know a partner, first of all, um, let's see, I want to do a project on ambulances, and you, I don't know anybody in the ambulances business, but well, sorry, I think that I'm in the wrong project. Hmm? You heard me, you heard me saying, try to think about your family, your colleagues, the friend of a friend, and it, let's see, that's the reason there is a steps. Going to the easier to the most difficult things. If after one month or two months or three months you have not been able to find who's doing things with ambulances, who's doing what, who's into well, you have to go little by little. Hmm? But uh, let's see, uh, now you have a great thing which is called the internet and the, and the web. Uh, you need to have the people together with you that can, that, uh, at least a team of people that can read uh, beside English, French, German at least, because the, the French usually don't write in English. The German rarely write in English. So you need somebody to go, right now only 50% of the web is in English. The other 50% and, 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 and it's going to be less in the future. So you better have somebody, but and in, after going to the web and using all the tools that you know about the web and you have to have people understanding how to search in the web, you find nothing, well, perhaps your, 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 um, your problem doesn't exist. Right today, if something is not the internet from a pragmatic point of view, it's either because it's still in the lab, and if it's still in the lab, it's very difficult to create impact. Because if the guys of the ambulance service of your country, when they talk to you, they don't mention this problem, 
then the problem is only in your idea. And I use the ambulance because it's something very tangible. Try to think in research in other terms. If the people who are practitioners, imagine that you're thinking about something for libraries or for cultural heritage, and the people and the operators in the, in the, in the cultural heritage or in the education field, that they go to conference in their respective field, they don't talk about this, I will really drop the proposal. I will really drop the proposal unless when you explain your two pages, if they say wow, perhaps you have a case. If not, forget it. Well, <laughs> uh, one of the biggest problems of managing the projects is the hidden agendas. Every, every research leader has his own agenda. Huh? Because I want to publish the paper on I don't know what. Sometimes they tell you and sometimes they don't. And you find out in the middle of the project that somehow, I don't know how, the lines of research that were going in parallel, they start to diverge. And they never meet, or they were converging and all of a sudden, whoops, or they converge but go on this side, they never meet. This is, project, this is project management at proposal level. Hey, if you know your research field, say, hey, where are you going? through the uh, ontological school or to the stochastical school. I don't know, but talk about these things. Because you are not, hey, you are not writing a book. It's not a, a, a race of who's going to publish first. No, no, we are teaming up to get money from the commission. So discuss this thing. Paolo can give much, much, much more details on this, but uh, uh, this is pretty common, pretty, pretty common. Okay, uh, you got something there. You got a question? No, I'm fine. Yeah? I'm fine. Thank you. Any question? Yes, I'm here. Thank you for all what you said. I wanted to ask um, a short question about the Horizon 2020, about the earlier part of your talk. Has it, uh, has it been approved already? No. I mean, we Okay, so I mean, with this economic crisis in Europe, uh, do you think it will be approved? I mean, we still going on the budget and everything. Let's see. Um, Horizon 2020 was submitted in November 2011. Right now, is in the European Parliament for discussions. During the second part of this year, uh, the, the discussions are going to be completed. The proposal from the Commission to the Parliament is 80 billion. 8-0 against the 50 billion that we have been uh, using in the last period. <sighs> Probably the member state will cut down that, that 80. Uh, but unless something really tough occurs like uh, Spain, Italy and France go into the sink, they will keep it. Because either they go to that, they don't have a B plan. Mm -hmm. The A plan is going through innovation and going into research. But there is no B plan. So show me the B plan and I will tell you. But the, 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 the B plan is not there. The only right now, because the B plan will, will transform, will be to transform Europe in the playground of the world. The only thing that Europe has unique is, uh, well, not even the Tour Eiffel, but Paris. Mm -hmm. Paris has, has not been duplicated by the Chinese yet. <laughs> okay. No, no. The truffles, the wines, just name it. Everything has been already copied. Hmm? But they cannot copy thousands of years of history. Yes. So, what are, what are certain parts of Europe living out of right now? Of the Russian tourists, and we are getting the first big flows of Chinese tourists. But all our big production of cars, uh, everything, let's see, the, the Chinese are even 
assembling the Airbuses, which was one of the rider, the Nokia. Just think about the, 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 our spearhead, our symbols of Europe. Most of them are not there anymore. So the only thing we have is tourism, design. Well, design right now, the Italians design something in the morning and the Chinese are producing it in the afternoon. So the only thing we can get is to try to be in the innovation side. It's the only thing. So yes, I think there's going to be, uh, but it's something that is going to be, is work for next year. For you, it's work for next year. For me, it's work right now, but for you, it's work for next year. Since you were very blunt with us, I wanted to ask about the competitive landscape you talked about. I mean, this FB7 project, it's not a quota program at all. I mean, when you evaluate all the proposals, you get it based on all the criteria you showed, not like quota program, like each country will get some kind of share or something. I don't get you. Can you elaborate a little bit? The FP7 project, what yeah. we are talking about, it's not a quota program, is it like uh, when you evaluate the proposals, each country has a specific share to get or? That's all, that's, that's all stories. That's not, let's see, that's not anymore, at least in the, no, 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 at all. Let's see, uh, if, I, if, I, if, the te if the technology partner that I need right now is in Palestine, or is in Malmo, uh, let's see, what, those, there are no quotas, of course there are no quotas. There are certain, for example, if you come out with a consortium that out of 10 partners, nine are German, and I have seen that, well, well they, actually it cannot be possible right now, but seven are Germans, and two are Austrian and one Swiss, and they, all the entire consortium speak German, they would say the capabilities of European-wide impact are very low. I can kill a proposal like that in, two, in 20 seconds. Of course, there are idiots preparing proposals and there are idiots evaluating proposals. But that's the trick of going to the unit and say, hey, I got this proposal, I have this, is to talk, is to prepare your customers to, hey, I'm going to bring you something. I'm going to make you a proposal you will not be able to reject. That's part of the killing. Okay. Other questions, please? I got them dead, not tired, dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. I hope, I hope the best for you, okay?